Hi there. As part of this presentation, we'll cover the auditing functionality in the Informatica Master Data Management product. We'll cover what is auditing, why is auditing needed. I'll demonstrate the auditing functionality in MDM and we'll wrap up with things to consider before you enable the auditing functionality. So what is auditing? So the two main integration points with MDM are the services integration framework, which is an API based framework to do various things with an MDM, which are invoked via APIs. And then there are JMS messages which are generated for various events that happen within MDM. Now for both of these integration points, if we need to capture the data which is being exchanged between the external system and MDM, we use the auditing functionality. So auditing functionality allows us to capture data which is being exchanged between MDM and the external system. By default, auditing is not enabled. So let's cover why do we need auditing now. So at Global Customer Support, the most common questions we get are, okay, I uh, have an IDD application where I've written some user exits. Now, the code is not expecting, working as expected. So IDD application, as you know, is based on services integration framework. So it's treated as an external application which is generating data, which is exchanging data with MDM. So in this case, we need to know what's the data which is being sent as part of the user exit to the MDM application and what's the data which is being sent out. The other example of calls which we might get are, okay, we've developed some uh, custom SOAP-based uh, web services, which are business-based web services, which are wrappers on the SIF SOAP web services. So I'm searching for data and I'm not getting any data back. So now we need to break your web service down into what we could understand as being passed to the MDM application. So auditing allows us to do this. Auditing allows us to capture data which is being exchanged. It's typically used along with the various log files which are generated by the MDM application. So let's jump on to the demo now. So I have the Hub Console open here. So I have the Hub Console open for a specific ORS in my application. I have the Utilities Workbench. I have the Auditing Audit Manager utility. So there's two parts to it. So the message queues and the API request message queues are for enabling JMS messages. Auditing of the JMS messages which are sent out and API requests are for enabling audit, enabling or disabling audit for SIF based APIs. So this is a list of APIs which we support and we could go ahead and enable it and then the include XML if you want to along with just enabling the audit if I want to capture the actual data which is exchanged I enable include XML so we, we typically ask you to enable both enable audit as well as include XML so now things to remember here with an API request we have no system and a list of system names which you've configured the source systems. So no system are for SIF requests which do not pass in a system name. For example, let's say search match. I'm doing a fuzzy search for a name. You do not pass in a system name in that instance. But let's take an example of a put request where you want to insert or update data in that case, you give us a system name and say, okay, I want to insert data as in from the SFA system or from the IDD system, right? So, so you have a system name. In that case, in case I want to audit a put request, which is 
being generated from the admin system i come under the admin source system here and locate the put api request and i enable audit for that specific request so let's jump in and uh, check the audit so i've enabled audit on the search match request here right so what happens when i do a search match so it goes into a table by name c underscore repos underscore audit table which exists under my ors schema i have the soap ui tool open here and i'm i have a search match api soap request so where i'm searching for a specific person so if i run my request here so i get a re response back which retrieve one row if i go back to the repos audit table and i check this table i have uh, some data here so we see the the first two data is probably from an older run right so uh, the things you think uh, remember here a row id audit is a unique id for each row here so um, search match is the api which was run so if i have a put it will say put search match response is the response to the search match api so the data xml tells me what's the actual xml that was sent in so this was the data which came in remember that the passwords are encrypted so we do not display the actual password the search match response data xml will have the data which was sent out row id audit previous in case of uh, request response row so the response row will be pointing to the request row or the error row will be pointing to a request row so username the actual username which was used for the sif request the table name the actual object on which we executed the request so now let's just generate some error data here so i'm searching for a party but i'm passing a wrong match column name i'm passing a match column name from which doesn't exist so i get an error right away so let, let's look at the data here so you see this is my request that came in and then the response for that request and it was an error and it, it gives me the exact same message which was sent out so as i said so so this is a very important tool the first step which we ever use in troubleshooting issues related to sif calls is what's the actual data that came in and what was the data which went out so this is auditing so now let's jump back and uh, look at what are the things to consider before you enable auditing so remember that auditing generates a lot of data so and there is performance implications here so make sure you enable audit only when necessary only when you want to troubleshoot and once you're done troubleshooting or capturing the data disable the auditing functionality we do not recommend you to have auditing enabled all the time again emphasizing on the volume of data that is generated as part of the audit make sure if you have it enabled for some time make sure you keep truncating the table after you have gathered all the data that is necessary for you and remember that auditing occurs only when the request goes to the mdm server in case where let's say the request was not even well formed 
right? I mean, there was a problem with the XML tag. In that case, the request does not even go to the MDM server. So if the request does not go to the MDM server, you will not have an audit for it. So if you need more information on audit, so it's available in the configuration guide in MDM. So it used to be called as an administrator guide in older versions of MDM. So that's about the audit functionality in MDM. Thank you.